Hey there, welcome back. We're continuing on with Builder Trend, and I wanted to take a quick pause before we dive further into a more complex schedule and really just talk about how important the schedule is when it comes to the other aspects of Builder Trend. I wanna show you how powerful this is, and I think that'll help as you're building out your schedule to understand how many different things, not just schedule and production items, are dependent on that schedule, all right? So just a quick demonstration of how this works and really how powerful it is. This is called Link to schedule. So bear with me, 10 minutes or less, really quick video to ensure that we understand the true weight of the schedule. So the schedule drives the bus. It is the central core part. That's obviously why I started with it. You get quick win, it's easy to kind of do and, and intuitively understand. The attributes within BT are dependent on the schedule. What do I mean by attributes? That's to-dos, that's selections, that's invoices, there's various different things that we can tie to the schedule as the schedule moves these items move as well. Your entire calendar of like how we do everything, not just production, is dynamic and it moves as our schedule moves. Whenever possible, whenever you have the opportunity, I want you to set your dates based on the schedule. That's gonna save you a ton of time. Remember that most of the things that you do within a construction project are dependent on where the project is at in production. So if you have a task that is due, that due date is probably determined based on where the project is. And therefore, if the project moves, that due date for that to-do probably moves as well. Not every time, not all the time, but most of the time, okay? So I'm gonna show you that today. Here's where um, link to schedule works. I'm gonna show you all these to-dos, selections, POs, bills, owner invoices, and RFIs. So let's get into Builder Trend. I wanna show you what I mean. So as a reminder, here's our schedule. We started building it out. We've got some items. We can look at it in calendar view, list view, uh, in this case, Gantt view. Okay, and so what we can do with this thing here is now make other parts within our system dependent on the schedule. So when this moves, the other aspects of the system move as well. So what do I mean by that? Let's talk about to-dos. All right, so to-dos are tasks that we can do. All right, and when we add a to-do, we're gonna title the to-do something like, um, how about this, schedule electrical inspection. Okay, that's something that I'm gonna have to do. I'm gonna assign that to me, okay? And you can do any other thing, any other attachments, things like that. We're gonna talk about to do really specifically later, but right now I'm just going to create it. Now look here, I can choose a date that it's due, okay? And I probably intuitively know, hey, if my electrical inspection is, I need to have it on a certain day, I can schedule it for this day here. Okay, but instead of doing that, let's make it more powerful. Let's link it to our electrical inspection, or better yet, our rough electrical. Hey, once our rough electrical is done, or a few days before it's done, let's schedule that inspection. Okay, so what I'm doing here is, based on when rough electric is done, I'm gonna schedule this task two days before. Okay, so there it shows up. It's currently showing past due, that's fine. Okay, now I'm gonna open up my schedule in another tab here. Okay, so watch as I say, move rough electric down here, okay? Now, are my inspection moves, great. If I refresh here, I'm going to see that my due date moves, and it should, right? Hey, if the whole project is moving, in this case, out, I don't have to do this task until later. And of course, on the other end of it, if the whole project, if, if something moved in, uh, and actually, we could do that based on like the start date too, right? So it's really cool if you do all this start date stuff, you can move the whole thing and then everything's gonna come with it. Okay, that might adjust as you click and drag, it might adjust your dependencies. So just be watch it, watching out for that. But you can see that the due date then changes. All right, so d making the to-do dependent on the schedule is a really good idea. Another thing we can do is we can make selections dependent on the schedule, okay? So if I look at my selections here, this is really great for helping a customer or yourself, your internal team, prioritize what selections we need to make and what time and setting deadlines, okay? Try not to leave these blank. Try to have them. Even if you edit them and adjust them, try to have a deadline in there. So again, I can put a date. I can say, hey, I need your plumbing fixture selected by this date. Or better yet, I can tie it to that schedule item. So how about um, rough plumbing? Hey, before we start rough plumbing, I'm gonna need those plumbing fixtures picked out. And this is usually picked out, right? And so if we're picking them out, we probably need to pick them out by a certain date and then build in some kind of buffer for deliveries and getting them on site, making sure we don't have issues. So I'm generally gonna say, hey, if rough plumbing starts on you know, April 29th, 
I better have my plumbing fixture selected, let's say six weeks in advance. That's um, 42 days, calendar days is what's happening here. And I'll save and close that. And now as my rough plumbing moves in or out, that date, that deadline for this, this selection will move as well. Okay, really, really powerful. This also works for bills and POs. So if we have a purchase order. This is something that um, we are going to need to pay at some point in time. So we can say we have a electrical or like, actually this is a really good one when you split things up, say for flooring. Um, or yeah, you could have like a start and another one. But um, here again, link to schedule. Okay, so electrical, I'm gonna, you know, this is gonna be due Okay, um, in this case, it's just related. This is just the completion date. Okay, now we can create bills off of this. We'll do a real deep dive on POs, don't worry. I'm just gonna kind of get something in there. So that we have a PO for 5,500. Okay, our bills, which are the actual payments that we're gonna be issuing against those POs. So I'm just gonna create this bill real quick. The bills, we can then link to the schedule item as well and we'll say, hey, when rough electric is done, or in this case, let's just say that I owe like 50%. Let's say that the, um, let's say that the entire electric is gonna be 5,500, but like some of it's rough, some of it's finished. I can say that, you know, zero days after rough electric's done, I'm gonna owe 2,500 bucks. And then I can create another one for finished electric, which I don't have the schedule item yet, but I would do that. All right, so bills and POs, awesome. Now I'm gonna get into how I run my cash flow out of bills, purchase orders, and invoicing. It's a really cool system I've come up with that uh, if set up right, which takes some time, what's cool is as the, the schedule moves, you can understand how much cash will be exiting your business, meaning how many purchase orders and bills are exiting your business. And then on the other side, which I'm gonna demonstrate now, how much cash is entering your business via invoices. Okay, so just like we did with bills and POs, we can link invoicing. So you could just set up an invoice and say, you know, like, hey, rough-ins are complete. So um, invoicing is really good for progress. Okay, so progress payment, rough-ins complete. And again, I can look, I can kind of know, you know, about this date, rough-ins are gonna com be complete. Uh, this is kind of a draw. And it can be like your total project is 100,000. And we're gonna do 20% of that whatever, I'm gonna get an invoicing, all that stuff, don't worry, I just wanna show you the dates here. So here I'm just date, uh, based on a deadline, let me just save that. Okay, now what I like to do with something like this, Ruffin's Complete, is you can base it off of one schedule item. So a good idea would be on your schedule, you can have, um, or you can do, uh, you know, we have, you know, HVAC, plumbing, electrical, we got electrical inspection. You can create one schedule item that is like rough ends complete, and you can make it dependent on those three. Now you can only have three dependencies, so gotta see if that will work for you. But um, you could also do it like on maybe drywall starting, because like drywall obviously wouldn't start unless, um, unless the other would, right? So um, the phasing, I can just put it as demo and rough ends. And then I'd probably do a tag. I'd probably do something like invoice. I'll show you how I use that in a little bit. But um, so I'll just do that, save and close. So there's my rough ends complete. And then I can go to my invoice and I can tie it to that single, okay, schedule item. Okay, rough ends complete, excellent. And it's due exactly on the date. And then of course, as you can envision, if and when I move electrical out, that's gonna move out all of my rough-ins. Let's move it out further. Move out all of my rough-ins. And then when I look at this invoice, now my due date has moved as well. Super powerful, okay? And then little teaser, what I do with those tags is now I can like look at my entire schedule, maybe in a list view is a good way to do it, or a calendar, whatever. And you can filter then on that tag and you can say, hey, give me anything that has the invoice tag to really show me like, here's where my invoices are gonna be due. And these are the tasks that I'm gonna tell the team, listen, hey, we're, we're tracking toward an invoice. If we get this stuff done, we get to get paid. So let's kind of focus, let's move, let's go. So I'll take this schedule during a production meeting and we'll filter on those invoices so that we can understand what those really key tasks are. Let's try to get these things done maybe before the weekends, before a holiday, so that we can issue that invoice and get paid. All right, so you can see the power of the schedule. It is the hub, it drives the bus, 
and everything that we do is going to be related to it. And I want you to use that link to schedule as much as you can. All right. So now that we kind of got that sorted out, we're going to build out the schedule further. I'm going to show you a more comprehensive view. We're going to dig into tags and how to use them. And we'll start exploring other aspects of the system here in Builder Trend. Remember, I'm here for the long haul. Uh, be patient with me. A lot of videos are coming out. All right. If you have questions, comments, throw them in the chat. Subscribe to uh, this channel here and subscribe to the playlist. That way you can get updates as everything comes out. I will see you on the next video.